I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to use this time to reflect with you upon a dimension of the spiritual life that I'm not sure we discuss enough, and that is kind of the arc of it and the ebb and flow of our feelings as we make our way in this world as people of faith, and in particular as followers of Jesus. And so I'd like to begin by telling you of a time, and this was when I was a young adult in my mid-20s, when I felt and I knew that I, I had an important decision to make. Now, this wasn't a life-changing decision, but it was a big enough deal that I wanted to get it right. And I should say that I, you know, I had decided already that I was a Christian, had made my affirmations of faith in, um, in a variety of ways, and in fact, I was in seminary, okay? So I, you know, I was all in, right? And I was wrestling for days with this particular set of options. And I was genuinely torn, and I didn't know what to do. And it was an uncomfortable experience. And, and not an unfamiliar one, by the way. I struggled a lot with decisions back then, and I still do. Um, I am prone, I'm the kind of person that's prone to second-guessing myself, uh, making quick decisions and then immediately regretting them, going back and forth always wishing that some really clear light bulb would go off in my head and just settle the matter once for all, right? So, back then, I went for a swim at a nearby recreation center with this quandary in my head. And somewhere in the midst of doing laps, the light bulb went off, right? Clarity came. And it, it did feel like a gift from God, washing over me like the water in the pool. And it lifted me out of that indecisive state that I had worked myself up into. I knew exactly what to do and why. It was exhilarating, and I was so energetic that I picked up the pace and I swam the final laps as if I were competing for Olympic gold, you know? I was just, but, and I kid you not, as soon as I stepped out of the water and began to dry off, all the familiar doubt came back, completely wiping out the confidence I had experienced just moments before in the pool. And my first thought was something like, really? Are you kidding me? And then I had the good sense to like burst out laughing mostly at myself for the way I was stressing out over that one decision, and to like, cut myself a break, like this wasn't the end of the world either way. But that's when it dawned on me that these feelings I had of uncertainty, and then certainty, and then uncertainty again, they were just that. They were feelings that come and go. But at the same time, I still had a decision to make. And I realized that now I had another choice. I could either trust the clarity I experienced while I swam, or I could go with the rush of doubt that followed. And to be honest, that felt like the moment of faith when I decided to trust the experience in the water. And I remember, you know, actually praying about it. Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go as if that were from you, and I'm going to act on it. Now, now, let me say again that the decision I was dealing with wasn't that big a deal in retrospect. But the experience itself has helped me since then more times than I can count when the stakes were actually much higher, and when I had that sense of clarity that didn't last, and I have needed to decide if I was going to walk by faith and keep going, 
even when the confidence I felt in a given moment begins to fade. Now, what I hope you take away from this story is simply this, that how you feel or don't feel on a given day about God in the sense of having God's presence in your life, what you may or may not believe in the sense of having complete confidence that something is true, these, these come and go. But what you will have, and most certainly have had already, are moments like what happened to me in the pool when you're given something. You're given a gift of, of clarity or insight or an experience that you can't rationalize away, although it always will have the, you know, plausibility, deni you know, plausibility of denial. You could always pretend it didn't happen, right? Because usually nobody else sees it. Um, but I'm telling you that it's often real. And that's when the life of faith becomes real. When you decide to go with it, even when you have pretty good reason to turn back. Now, I'm not saying that every experience like this of seeming clarity, insight, or sensation that comes to you is of God. Um, that would be dangerous. They all need to be kind of tested out in some way. Um, and I have learned some things about that and how to sort that through the ones that are trustworthy and those that aren't. Um, but, and believe me, I don't always get this right. But here are a few pointers. If the experience is of God, the feelings that accompany it are almost always ones of profound love and acceptance. Acceptance of who you are and what you're going through in that moment. If it feels otherwise, if it feels harsh or mean-spirited or unforgiving, that's something else and ought to be rejected. Um, there's a part in the service where we talk about renouncing things, and, and that's something to renounce, actually. Those voices, those messages that would um, in any way cause you to question your worthiness as a human being and a child of God, even if they come inside your head. Uh, because sometimes, now, it doesn't mean that God doesn't have hard things to say from time to time, but it's usually in the form of, like, you need to slow down here, or um, maybe you should try forgiving somebody. Do you know what I mean? It's always in the service of love. Um, moreover, and this is important too, every once in a while, the word or the insight that comes to us will, be, will require a really dramatic response, but, but not as often as we think. More often than not, it's kind of incremental guidance, you know? the things that help us navigate a life. Um, the ones that require a big response usually come in times of crisis. And, and those are important too. Um, but the situation is different, and, and you can tell by the urgency of the moment. I'll give you just one example from my own life uh, a couple years ago, about two years ago now. Um, that was what, what was then um, the most acute and frightening stage of the pandemic. Some of us were talking about where we were just prior to this, but this was when we were at the height of it, right? In the spring of 2020. People were still dying in huge numbers, um, that we didn't have any vaccines as yet. And we had just settled my mom into a, an assisted living apartment that promised to be a really good place for her after she, as she was recovering from a life-altering surgery that took away all of her independence, just like that. And we had just moved her in. We were planning a blessing for her apartment and this big party. And then the center had to shut down completely. And it became, became a prison. And everything that made life living there was taken away. And she was holed up in her room in a place where she didn't know anybody. And she could never go outside and I couldn't see her. And my husband was away, and I was going crazy. And I woke up one morning 
and I knew as clear as I knew anything that I had to get her out of there right away. And within two days, she was living with us, and she lived with us for over a year, and it changed everything. Um, and were there decisions afterwards when I wondered if I had made the right choice? You bet. But I had to trust in that moment that it was the right thing to do, and then do it. Do you hear what I'm saying? These are the moments when we know that we're walking by faith, and when we're trusting that whoever God is, whoever Jesus is in our lives, is somehow in the mix with us, helping us navigate a life. And this, as much as I love this service and as much as I love church and all of that, and I'll get to this, I'll get to all of that in a minute, those moments are what set the course for us. Because that's when we decide that we're gonna live as if God is real. That the person of Jesus who lived and taught and healed and upended his society with a message of radical love and justice for the poor, and even when he died, death couldn't stop him. And that he's a living presence who is with those of us who choose to follow him. That he, These are the moments when we decide we're gonna trust all of this. And we know then it isn't so much how much head knowledge we have or how articulate our faith is, but if we're gonna live as if this were real. In those moments, as the black theologian Thurgood Marshall wrote so years ago, so many years ago, in those moments, darn it, when our backs are against the wall, right? So now, let me say in closing something about all the in-between time when those moments of clarity and spiritual connection, however we experience them, fade away or seem far off, when life is more routine and we're busy and we're jogging, we're juggling multiple things at once and we're tempted to spend way too much time on mindless things and nothing seems particularly dramatic or exciting. These are also spiritual moments when God and for Christians, when Jesus in the is with us, but the experience is no longer one of an adrenaline rush. It's, it's quieter, and we need to pay attention to the littler things, the bits of grace and goodness that are all around us, the opportunities to make a difference in the life of someone else or to do something good when no one else is watching, to go deeper in our practices that help us understand and know God better, reading through the Gospels, showing up in church, joining a prayer group, doing something for good, or giving your money, giving your money away so that someone else might breathe easier as a result. These are, these are the practices that make us more of what God needs in the world and also opens us to God in surprising ways. And, and more importantly, we're, we're aligning our lives to those moments, those big moments, when we're really clear about what matters most that gets so easily crowded out when there's so much swirling around us. And it's how we learn to hear the voice of Jesus when he speaks really softly. And we, can't, we become the kind of people that other people recognize as Christians. As Jesus said in the gospel text we just heard and in a song I used to sing in youth group, They'll know we are Christians by our love. So um, I'm going to leave you now with um, just a line or two from the passages that we heard today, because I think they can guide us in all those other times. Um, consider them just an orientation to take away from today. The first comes from the first passage from Acts that tells about what happened to Jesus and his disciples after the resurrection. 
And Simon Peter has one of those big aha moments, right? And he says, I truly understand now. I understand that God shows no partiality. And just take a moment and think about what that means. God doesn't play favorites. God doesn't see one person or group of people as more worthy than another. God doesn't divide humankind or classes in school or churches in the diocese or nations in the world. He doesn't divide them up the way we do. And what might that mean for you and me? And now hear Jesus speaking as he did in the Gospel of John, and imagine him now saying goodbye to his disciples on the night before his death. And he says to them, where I'm going, you cannot go. In other words, you're going to experience time when I don't feel close to you. And what I need you to do then is to love each other. So when you don't know what to do, try loving somebody, right? Try loving somebody in a concrete, impalpable way. That's what you can do. And more specifically, he said, love people as you have been loved by me, which brings me full circle to what I said at the beginning, which is to try and think back of those experiences when you actually felt really loved and held and guided and, uh, and try to live your life remembering that. Um, now, there's a whole bunch I could say about the Christian life that we'll talk about another time or you can talk about with your people, but for now, I simply pray that this day and the prayers that Bishop Shand and I will have the privilege of offering on behalf of those being confirmed and received and reaffirming, I just pray that they will be occasions of real grace and love that you can feel and that you can trust. And then no matter how you feel, that you can go from this place and into your life to live with as much courage and as as much love as you can. Okay? Amen.